Okay, light attracts both light and dark, right? You know, there's this statement, light attracts light, and light attracts light, therefore, and that's true. But as you, as you increase your brightness, especially when you've signed up to incarnate into a civilization that is a mixture, um, a big mismatch, has been this big soup of all these different cosmic streams for the past tens of thousands of years, and we're just battling out all this cosmic karma, right? So this is this soup, this collective agreement of we're all here together. It doesn't matter where the hell you're from. You're going to somehow be living together in the same consensus reality, which is unusual, cosmically speaking, and especially astrally speaking or time-space speaking. Because the frequency that you're on, that's what manifests. That's what's right there. But there's this unique collective agreement in our civilization that is, let's just try this out. Let's see what happens when people with completely different values, with completely different frequencies, with completely different orientations and inclinations and karmic backgrounds and histories and genetics are all thrown together for thousands of years. Let's see how they fare, right? So that's us and the results are obvious. It's been fun. <laughs> so when you are a particularly bright spot, in this confused ocean, if there is a coherence to your stream of consciousness, to your energy fields, and there is an imprint for you to share something valuable that could possibly transform this confusion into harmony, that this, this emits a certain frequency that stands out. Does that make sense? Right? So again, there's the idea of the wanderer, which is a soul that doesn't natively need the lessons that are here anymore, but they come here anyway out of a sense of service. Not that they're not getting anything out of it at a soul level because they're refining subtle balances between love and wisdom. But their main intention is to be of service to their brothers and sisters who are calling, always unconsciously calling. If you develop sensitivity enough, you can sense into the collective and you can hear a million cries within a single second for help, for support, for clarity, right? And so as a wanderer, as a higher density wanderer, a lot of you guys heard that call and you came here and you chose to play this game and you chose to forget, you chose to play the poker game. But there is an imprint there. There is a sort of a, a shield or a protection or a, a, a unique core frequency that stands out from the native population, the native civilization. And it's clearer, it's brighter, and it's here on a service to others oriented mission, if you will, or purpose or calling. So it has a brightness. Now the brightness attracts both light and dark, which is what we'll be getting into. So the wonders are high priority targets because of their capacity to make changes and remember quicker about the way this universe works. They don't need as much scientific evidence usually. They are more faith oriented. Doesn't mean it can get covered up with skepticism and you need to get rid of that, but their remembrance is very pure. It's very heartfelt. It's very innate to them. And so they're high priority targets because they can establish the new world, the new earth, they can help usher in this new reality, this new collective. So they'll be watching you. They'll be watching literally for these bright spots, these little demo switches that turn up. And every time you have a realization that's profound, that penetrates the veil of your consciousness, that helps you remember who you are, why you are here, and that sets you on this path with great dedication and inspiration and service to others, boop, they check their radar and it's like, oh, location here, vibration there, person that. And they'll come and, and hang out for a bit, you know, in, and in such subtle ways that you usually don't notice it. And because it's so subtle, I want to shed some light on this. Um, it can also be not so subtle, you know, like when someone comes to pick up Corey and, in fr and just walk into his house, obviously that's not so subtle. But for most of us, for most of us, the way that they play their game is through using your weaknesses. Um, exploiting your weaknesses. So basically you agree, agree to be used. So, I mean, this has been with me for, for all my life. Um, as a child, I had just all kinds of OCD symptoms like ticks and like I would make sounds and there'd be just so much pressure on my system at once because I felt this drive and also I felt this opposition that I was playing with as a child. Like my leg would like go a different direction and I couldn't control my body or um, a not so subtle example, for example, is, and, and this demonstrates and illustrates how they try to sway you from your natural orientation of service to others, is I was about eight years old and we had this little uh, kitten. Um, and at the time I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know about these influences. I didn't have the words or the concepts for them, right? 
So we had this little kitty cat who was like two months old and she, we walked her on a leash still to get her familiar with you know, where the house is and all that stuff. So at some point I remember I had her on this leash. I was in my yard. I just came back from, from walking her and something took over my body or so it seemed. And there was this prickly bush right here. So I just watched myself for about 20 minutes. She would run out of it and I would pull on the necklace and like land her right in the prickly bushes and she would run. And I saw my body do this and I was crying, but I couldn't stop myself. It's just something took hold of my body. And I identified with that, which is their idea, which is their intention that you start to um, either be ashamed or you stop doing what you're doing in terms of the light that you're sharing. You know, many times in like the raw quotes, thank you again for your awesome, this is perfect pre-work. Like they'll go after your social organizations or you as the head of that social organization, they will try to dismantle that system or they will try to make you experience yourself as a hypocrite or as not worthy of doing so that, so that you resign out of your free will. They've got scoreboards. They hang out in sort of like fifth density bars and clubs and they've, <laughs> they've got, they've got these scoreboards, service to self scoreboards, right? It's, it's very high hierarchical, even more so on the service to self side. It's very high, high hierarchical, hierarchical. Yeah. So the highest points that they can score is when they make you do something out of your own free will that you think you're doing out of your own free will, but you're basically giving up your, some expression of your light. Does that make sense? Because that's the best. That's the least infringed. It's the least obvious. And it's the highest level chess game that they can play with you. So what they'll do is they'll mess with your weaknesses. They'll mess with your predispositions that you, your blind spots, the things that you don't see. And they'll manipulate it in such a way and they'll pour this dark energy into exacerbating these particular emotions, belief systems, or doubts, or confusions so that, um, so that you will actually start to accept these things as your own insights. Does that make sense? That's the most powerful way. Now it can become gross or more gross. Like someone like Corey, for example, who in my perspective has a position that is more, um, more immediately influential, like they'll risk some of their scoreboard points or they'll send their minions after him to be more upfront, to really threaten him in his face because uh, be simply because of the sheer sensitive nature of this. And it can actually decrease the scoreboard on the minions, so to speak, the lower density, the fourth density wanderers, uh, sorry, service to self-oriented beings, but they have to obey the higher order if they wish to maintain that. But the highest way to, to mess with you is to not know, to have you not know that they're messing with you. So, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe, you, all of you have had this influence in your life at one time or another, whether you remember this, know this, are able to contextualize this or not. So you don't have to assume that necessarily, but that is my perspective. That is my estimation. So let's see. Um, if they can't go after your weaknesses, or even if they can, they'll go after your partners or whoever you're closest to in that moment. Uh, have you ever noticed anything along those lines? Yeah. You want to raise your hand? ever been suspicious like you're not quite yourself right now mm. um, and often they try to get to your weaknesses through stimulating them in a certain way that they're not really conscious enough to shield and so they'll respond in a certain way they get into this funk and you get into this communicative funk and you feel like what the hell is going on i'm not myself you're not yourself let's break up right Bingo, scoreboard, yay, they broke up out of their own free will. They chose to break up or they chose to do this or they chose to hit each other or they chose to abuse each other when that's not the native frequency or intention between these two beings at all. You follow? Does that make sense? Cool. So be aware of the psychic relationship games as well and your partner's weaknesses. Wherever, wherever you're not aware of what you are um, or who you are, you're not able to really control that or be as aware of that. But this is why they're your friends, you see. Accelerated learning comes through these experiences because they show you exactly where your weaknesses are and you can make yourself impervious to them. You can make yourself, etern you can eternalize, immortalize yourself. You can transcend these things. Without them, it would take you lifetimes. So utilize these dark spots, you know, and make friends with them because, which brings me to my last point just quickly, being loved by, by their target is the most annoying thing to service the self-entity. 